Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to uh, introduce uh, OpenAI function calling, uh, which is a feature that allow uh, large language models like uh, GPT to determine whether or not uh, to invoke functions. So those functions can be like the function that you written in Python code, or like external APIs, for example, like uh, get information from database. Uh, so large language model will format the required data from the user input, and it can send that uh, arguments to the functions that you predefined. Uh, however, keep in mind that OpenAI does not actually run or execute those functions, and you have to write a Python code to decide that whether or not you want to uh, run that functions. So this is a function calling page uh, from OpenAI. So basically, uh, you provide the code, and also the large language model will receive the user prompt, and also they will extract information from user prompt, and also if, based on the prompt, the, the AI decides, okay, you should call this function, they will pass a parameter to that function. Uh, and it is very important that your application should call or run execute this function. OpenAI does not do that. So I was confused uh, initially when I was learning this uh, feature. And actually, it turns out that they don't call the function. And you should call that function. Uh, so uh, in today's uh, tutorial, so I'm going to use an example that I will use a function calling to automatically grade my students' submissions uh, on Canvas. So our university using a Canvas learning uh, online learning system. Um, and this uh, for a specific uh, lab where uh, I teach students that use uh, MongoDB. So students collected some data into MongoDB. And also in this assignment, I ask students to query their collected data in MongoDB. And they need to provide answers for five questions. And now I'm going to try to use an OpenAI function calling to automatically grade their submissions. Uh, OK, so first, uh, you need to have a Canvas uh, learning management system develop key. Uh, you don't need to apply that key. Uh, uh, it is already in your a Canvas user account. So for example, if you go to your user account, and this is my user profile, and I go to the settings, and here you can see you can click a new access token. So that is the API key that I'm talking about. Uh, so if you click, uh, you can just, uh, just define the purpose, and also when this uh, API will, or when this token will expire, and then you can just click Generate. It will give you a very long string, just like the APIs that, uh, from other uh, um, uh, programs. And, and now you can see this is my generated auto grading uh, API key. So, uh, so I just copy and paste that API key uh, into uh, uh, a, a safe place, for example, uh, AWS Secrets Manager. So in this demo, I call the key API key, and I'll call the secret the canvas. In addition, um, because I'm using OpenAI uh, function calling, so I also, I also need an OpenAI API key, uh, which you need to buy it from OpenAI. All right, uh, so we are going to use three Python libraries. Uh, the first one is Canvas API, so that can allow you to retrieve uh, students' information from Canvas and also allow you to post grades on Canvas. The second one is OpenAI Library, so that is to, uh, to use LMS, large language models, and also function calling. Uh, the third one is uh, Pure Mongo, so because uh, the students' assignment are using, uh, they, they used uh, MongoDB. A database, so I need to use PI Mongo to check the, uh, students' answers. Uh, so this is a secret manager uh, function. So because I store all my credentials on AWS Secret Manager, so I need to use this function to retrieve the credentials. And then uh, I'm going to import the Python libraries and those credentials. 
Uh, so specifically, so you can see here, um, this is Open API, Open AI API key. Uh, I also create a client uh, with Open AI. Um, so for the canvas, uh, you need um, the API URL. Okay, and that is just basically that uh, uh, the URL that your university used uh, when they access Canvas. So, for example, um, in our university is called canvas.gmu.edu. So, uh, the API URL is https colon slash slash canvas.gmu.edu. So, uh, if you like, you can also store that one into a secret manager uh, service. But I think uh, for the demonstration purposes, so I, I didn't install that one. And the next one is, of course, the sensors API key. So that is one that you generated here, and then you stored into the AWS Secret Manager. And then you can create a Canvas uh, uh, object, so which allow you to uh, uh, retrieve a user or student submissions and also uh, post grades on Canvas. And for the specific assignment, uh, you need to find out the course ID and also assignment ID. So, um, and also if you want to retrieve a student information uh, for specific students, and you can also provide a student ID here. So uh, in this demo, uh, I'm using my test student, so on campus, uh, on Canvas, uh, you can always have a test student that's like a dummy student. Um, it's not a real student. Uh, for this assignment, uh, so you can find out the course ID. So if you go to URL, so that's a course ID. Uh, you can find out the, the, uh, the assignment ID. So each assignment has a different assignment ID. And this is a student ID. Okay, again, this is a test student. It's not a real student. Uh, so this basically is how you find all those information. So if you want to grade multiple students, uh, you can use a for loop to retrieve all the submissions. Um, this is a submission that looks like. So um, for this lab, so this they collected they collected uh, USA jobs data from USA jobs, and they store the data into a MongoDB database, and I ask five questions. So for example, what is the highest salary that from the data that you collected? Uh, which location that had the most job that been posted? Uh, which organization that has the most job that posts or which organization posts most uh, number of the jobs? And how many jobs that started in October 2024? And the last question is that how many jobs that mentioned AI? in their uh, job summary. So, so students need to provide the connection string of their database. Uh, they need to provide the answers to those five questions. So they don't need to type the, the questions. And they need just to provide answers. So this is the one uh, uh, demo answer that, again, that's by a test student, a demo student, which I typed. Um, so you can see they have connection string. They have the answer for the five questions. Okay, so that's how the, the assignment look like. And right now, it, you can see there's no grades. So the, the total one is uh, 100, 100 points for this assignment. All right, so, so that is this assignment. Uh, next, we have defined two uh, utility functions. So the first one, we are retrieve the submissions. So you can see you need to provide the course ID and also the assignment ID. And they can retrieve all the submissions uh, for this assignment. And the next one is a post grade. So where you need the course ID, assignment ID, you also need a student ID. Because for each student, the grades are different. So you need also student ID. Uh, you can also have the option to post comment. Uh, okay, So that is the second utility functions. Okay. So our uh, first scenario is that, OK, so we have a assi assignment. And uh, all the students will answer like several questions or like write an essay, something like that. And 
the answers are the same. So they have a universal correct answer. So that's our first scenario. Um, for that scenario, actually, it's very simple. So you don't need to use function calling because the answer is the same for all the students. So you can just use uh, uh, use uh, the normal uh, chat completion endpoint like GPT-4 uh, to handle this, uh, those assignments. So here, you can say I just defined a, um, a help function. Uh, it's the same as the other uh, just normal uh, chat completion uh, endpoint, uh, so not using the, not using the function calling. So I'm going to execute this function, define this function, and next. Uh, so this is the first scenario where like all the answers are the same. So the right answer are is the same uh, is the same. So here I defined the the right answer. Uh, I also defined the delimiter. So it's a technique in prompt engineering. So remember that for those five questions, uh, the right question is that the first one is that is the maximum salary. Uh, that is the location that uh, that send most of the jobs, and that is organization that send most of the jobs. So you can see that for the right answer, it is Macklin, Virginia, and also the office of the director of the national intelligence. And also the, the number of the job starting in October is 102. And that job that mentioned AI is six. OK, six jobs mentioned AI. So if you, you, if you compare this one with the student's answer, you can see that student said it's Macklin. Student didn't say that it's Macklin, Virginia. OK, student also said at the office of DNI. So use the abbreviation of that organization. It's the same organization, but student didn't provide the full name. And also in this assignment, this submission, you can see the, the, the last question, uh, the answer is not accurate because the right answer is six and student answered five. So the last one is not accurate. OK, uh, so now uh, we're going to use a for loop to iterate all the student submissions. And also, for this demonstration, so I'm only going to analyze the demo student submission and also uh, to provide grades for this demo student only. OK, so if you want to provide grades for all your students, and you can just comment out this uh, if statement. OK, uh, so here you can see uh, this is a prompt. So uh, first, I tell AI that what are the questions. So like, uh, students need to provide a valid connection string and also answer five questions, like the highest salary, location, has the most jobs, organization post most jobs, how many jobs start in October, and also how many jobs mention AI in the qualification summary. And, and then I ask AI analyze students' submissions uh, in this a user uh, message and also compare them to this right answer. So the right answer again is provided here. Uh, and also I tell the, uh, the larger function model that the total submission is uh, 100 points. Each question is 20. Each right answer received 10 points. Wrong answer received, uh, sorry, right answer received 20 points. Wrong answer received 10 points. Um, so I think it's just like, as long as you say something, you get some points. And uh, no answer receives zero points for that question. Uh, and also, if students fail to provide a connection string, they will receive zero for this entire assignment. Because theoretically, if you don't provide a connection string, how can I verify your answers? And I ask AI to calculate the total score and also provide a comment. Uh, and also explain why they lose points. And also the score is in a JSON document. Okay, so, and in the user message, I tell, uh, I provided the, the student's submission, which is from this, um, uh, retriever submission function. And, and then I provide the right answer. Okay, so, and then I retain this results to a student grades list. OK, so, so let's see that.
Okay, it is complete. Uh, so next, we are going to see the students. Uh, we are going to see the grades and also comments that are created by OpenAI. Uh, so before we see the real uh, grades, and uh, we, I'm going to, I'm not going to post grade first. So I just want to see the grades first, and then if everything looks fine, and I will run this code to post the grade. Okay. Uh, so now you can see that uh, the student got 90. That's right, because uh, students provide right answers for the number one, two, three, four. So those are 80. And this one is wrong, so that's 10 points. So that's 90 points in total. And also, you can see the, the comments. So they provide a valid connection string, answer all the questions. However, Q5 is not accurate. Okay, so the right answer is 6. Okay, so that's 90. And you can also see that although students mentioned Maclean, rather than Maclean VA. So AI still recognize that is the right answer. And also this one, uh, students didn't mention the full name. Uh, the full name is called Office of the Director of the National Intelligence. But AI still think that's the right answer. So that's that's a great, great, great job. So now I'm going to call this function that is post grade. So I'm going to post uh, the comment and also the, the 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 score on canvas for this student. Again, this is a test student. Okay, so let's run it. Okay, and you can see that the the grid posted successfully for that student. And now, if I go to this student page, if I refresh. Uh, you can see that the grades is posted 90 and also you can see that uh, the comment okay so it's exactly uh, the same comment that we saw in Python code all right so that is first uh, scenario where uh, there's only one uh, answer okay so we can use OpenAI to to auto automatically grade those submissions however uh, in this assignment students collected different data. Uh, so all the answers should be different because, for example, some students collect data talking about intelligence analysis. Some students collect data talking about data scientists. So all the, answer, all the data are not the same. So their answers are also not the same. So that's one that you need to use uh, additional tools to check students' answers one by one first. And then you need to pass those right answers to OpenAI so that OpenAI or the large language model is able to, to compare the right answers versus the student submissions. OK, so to use a function calling, first you need to define a function. So here I have defined a function called check answer. Uh, so the only input is a connection string. So a student need to provide the connection string to their database. and a uh, large, large language model will extract that connection string and pass that one to this check answer. And the check answer will check the questions for the, uh, the answer for the five questions. Uh, so because I know how to do the right query, so that for the first one, so that is the first query. So if you want to find out the maximum salary, you need to convert the information that mentioned salary into double format and also use a max function max function to find out the maximum salary. Uh, if you want to find out the locations, you need to use a group and also use sort and limit to find out which location has the most jobs. And the same thing for the organizations. So for organizations, you, uh, use, you use group to group organization names and then use sort and also limit. Uh, if you want to find out when the when the job started in October, so you need you need to convert the position start date into date first, and then you are going to see that whether or not the position start date is between the first day of the October and also the first day of November. So that's answer for the fourth question. The answer for the last one is that how many jobs mentioned AI. So you you, you should use the uh, the text search uh, feature that in MongoDB to search a keyword of AI and pass that result 
Okay, so this is the check answer uh, function. Uh, so here uh, I'm going to just manually check uh, this function. So uh, I'm going to copy the student the uh, connection string and uh, paste it here. And then I'm going to call that uh, function check answer function. This is written by me. So uh, so now you can see the right answer, maximum salary, and and then. Uh, the location that has most jobs is Maclean. Uh, this is the organization. And the number of jobs started in October 102, and also AI mentioned jobs uh, six. Okay, so those are the right answer. And uh, apparently, again, students made a mistake on the last one. Okay, so that is the, um, the check answer function. Uh, next, uh, so you need to write a function schema uh, when you use function calling. So basically, in addition to the function that you, you really need to include, you also need to write this piece of the code uh, that tell OpenAI that to understand how to use your functions. Um, so on OpenAI uh, function calling um, page, so they have this uh, tool called generate this schema. Uh, so you, you need login and also to use this uh, to use this function. Um, I believe that generate schema is free. So so actually, this schema is generated by using this tool. All right. Uh, so I'm going to define this uh, schema. Uh, next, we're going to define a help function. However, uh, this how function will use a function calling. So, uh, so you can see the difference is that uh, you need pass that function schema to this uh, into this function variable. So, so that's a function schema that we defined, and we pass that into this uh, function variable, and we run it. Okay. Uh, so now we are going to use two prompts. Okay. So, uh, the first prompt it will extract student submission. So for example, they are going to identify the connection string. And if there is connection string that is provided, and then uh, the large language model will pass that one to the check, will pass the, the connection string to the check answer function. And also, it will also tell me that, OK, so you, are, you can call this function. Uh, and also, um, when the function has been executed, when we receive the check answer, we are going to use our second prompt uh, to receive the answers that provided by the check function. And we're going to compare that answers with student answer and also uh, retain the grades and also comments. So we need to uh, prompt. OK, so here you can see, uh, again, we are going to retrieve the student submissions. And we are going to process the test student only. So this is our uh, first prompt. So we, we tell the, the five questions, and we say that analyze the student submissions um, provided in this uh, user message. Uh, we also need to extract answer to those five questions into a JSON document, and also extract connection string and check the correct answers using the connection string. OK, so, uh, so that's my um, my first prompt. And then we all receive this response from the uh, first prompt, which is the uh, AI help function. And if we find out that uh, the, the finish reason is called is a function call, which means that, OK, so uh, large, large language model does identify um, the connection string and also say, OK, you are ready to check that student uh, submissions. And then we're going to retrieve those arguments and we pass out arguments, which is the connection string, to this our arguments variable. And we're also going to extract the student answer to this student uh, answer variable. Um, and next, we're going to pass um, the connection string of the arguments to this check answer. And we're going to retain the check answer to this right answer variable. So, uh, so once a function being called, we have the student answer, and we have the right answer. 
And now this is our second prompt. So again, I repeated those five questions. I asked AI that, OK, so the student's answers, uh, compare student answer against the right answer. And those are pretty much similar uh, instructions. And also in the user message, I provided the student answer. OK, so that is student answer and also right answer. OK, and finally, uh, I up, uh, pass those uh, the the uh, the grades and also comment uh, by the second prompt to this uh, student grades list. Okay, so uh, let's try run this one and let's see uh, if it worked. All right, uh, I didn't see any errors. Okay, so let's look at the uh, the result. So before we before we post grades, so let's just check the result first. Okay, uh, so you can see again uh, it gave a ninety from this the same submission, uh, which is accurate. And let's look at the comments. So a student provided a valid client string. The answer for one, two, and four are correct. Okay. The answer for three is partially correct as student didn't provide the full name of that organization. That's also great. Yes, student said the it's called Office of DNI and it's not didn't call the, the full name. The answer for the five is incorrect as student and underestimated the number of the job that mentioned AI in this qualification summary. And therefore the total score is 90. All right, I think that's great. So so I'm going to go ahead and post this grid one more time. And the grid was posted successfully. And now if I go back check this uh, canvas page, uh, I'm going to refresh. OK, uh, so I believe this is an updated grid. Um, it's the same as the first one. Uh, and also we do see this uh, new comments. So that one that we saw earlier. Okay, so I think function calling is a uh, is a great way that you can integrate additional tools uh, like APIs um, uh, with your large language model pipeline. And however, uh, I think you should be cautious and use uh, use AI to automatically grade student submissions. So I think you need to double check with your institution, see uh, whether or not the policies allow you to do that, um, because uh, if you do use uh, large language models, to some degree, you are passing the student submission to large language models. 